Greetings, welcome. Good morning, at least this morning here in the Philippines. In this video, we're going to finish up talking about cockpit virtual machines. We're going to specifically be talking about accessing them from outside your network through uh, cloud flared tunnels. It's kind of cool this morning. It's like 18, 19C. I mean, that's like uh, 65 to 70 Fahrenheit. We've got guests over, so we've been a little busy, but they're all wearing their heavy jackets. Me, well, if you're talking to a guy who wintered north of Nome, where it got down to a minus 60 Fahrenheit. So I find this weather comfortable. It's one of the things I like about living up here in Tagatai. It gets a little cooler. It's actually about five degrees C cooler than it is down the hill. But anyway, let's get on with this video, okay? So in the last couple of videos, at least the last couple of tech videos I did, we've been talking about a cockpit virtual machine as a replacement for Proxmox, which I've said before, I probably didn't give Proxmox a fair tryout with all the issues I've had with using a cockpit and virtual machines through Vert, LibVirt and uh, KVM. But that's neither here nor there. I will at some point give Proxmox another tryout. I've got another virtual machine server over here I'm going to be using and I'll try Proxmox on it just to see how it works. But in this video, like I said before, we're going to be talking about accessing remotely through the Cloudflare tunnel, which I hear a lot of great things about, see a lot of great videos about, but as usual, I seem to be the one who has the issues when I'm trying to work with these things. So we'll talk about as we work through getting things set up. This second time I've used cloud flared tunnels, but this will be the first time I've actually tried to set something up more permanent nature on my network rather than working in VMs and stuff. So it's going to be an interesting video. Not everything's going to work right probably, but then that's something I've come to expect, but we'll get through it. We'll troubleshoot it and we'll figure out what's wrong. So let's get going. All right, let's get started by talking about the setup. I'm assuming I've got my laptop at a remote place. Could be Starbucks. More than likely, it's my brother's brother-in-law's place. But anyway, it's a remote connection for my laptop. So I'm going to type into my browser bar on my laptop, pi.apple.org. Pi is a subdomain. Apple.org is a domain. These are just example domains, so I'm using them to make a point. Pi Apple, pineapple, or apple pie. Take your work pick. Anyways, I send it out and it goes remote connectivity, goes out onto the internet, hits a DNS server, and figures out that this subdomain domain name is registered with Cloudflare. So it sends it to Cloudflare. Cloudflare says, yes, that's one of mine. So we're going to start a tunnel. So a secure tunnel between the laptop and Cloudflare is established. Then Cloudflare looks at the uh, information we've entered. It says, ah, is somebody on Converge? So it sends it over to Converge. Converge ITC, which is my ISP, it comes through Converge on some public IP address, then a private IP address because Converge uses CGNAT. I understand CGNAT. What I don't understand is why they haven't gone to IPv6 yet. But the signal, the message goes through my router to my switch and is specifically destined for my cloud flared computer, which is running cloud flared. And it looks up where this thing goes. And it's going to say, yes, this goes for the Pi hole computer, but it also it's going to put an end to the secure tunnel, which goes from my laptop through Cloudflare, through Converge, through my router, through my switch to Cloudflare, and it ends there. Once it leaves Cloudflare, it's going to be a local unencrypted connection. Like I say, it ends up at my Pi hole at 192.168.5.7, and Amazingly, it works. I can actually see the login screen to my Pi Hole computer from my laptop at a remote location. So let's back up a second and we'll go to a CP for cockpit. This is my uh, virtual machine server we're talking about, and it's basically the same path DNS to Cloudflare to converge through the router to the switch to Cloudflare where the tunnel ends. And the tunnel says, oh, this address. Cloudflare says this address is associated with uh, 
192.168.5.5, which is my cockpit uh, virtual machine. So we execute this and we get a bit of a surprise here. It's not connecting. We get a 502 error. Oh my, what should we do? So I got an error. I looked it up online, not just the 502, but general errors. And the most common suggestions I got for troubleshooting are as follows. First, update your software. That may be quick, that may not be quick, but yeah, I've had that help in the past when I've had uh, connection issues. So yeah, that is a possibility. Clear the browser cache, another issue I've had in the past where that's helped. Turn off the firewall. Well, just make sure you turn it back on, but if that fixes the problem, then you gotta look at punching holes in your firewall. Try a different browser, that's always good because not everything works with every browser. Check another site, we did. We checked a Pi site and it worked. I also actually tried from a couple different locations. So yeah, then check for correct fully qualified domain name or FQDN. Uh, this is mainly checking the spelling, the capitalization and things like that to make sure everything matches up. And then try through a VPN. Eh. VPN solve problems, I don't think this is one of them. For example, I know Converge throttles my YouTube stream because every time I set my VPN up and stream YouTube through it, it goes fine. When the VPN's off, it stops a lot, it slows down, and so, yeah, VPN solve problems, but I don't think this is one they're going to solve. So, none of these actually resolve the problem I was having, so my best solution was turn all logging up to max, Recreate the issue, then review, review, review the logs, 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 because that's what tells you where the problem is. We hope. Fingers crossed. So for more log, actually specifically from the log from Cloudflare, because you can turn on logging in Cloudflare. I may talk about how to do that in another video, but we got this error unable to reach the original origin service. The service may be down or may not be responding to traffic from Cloudflare. Uh, that's a very generalized message, but TLS is a bit more specific and then failed to verify certificate X509. That's more specific yet. And finally, certificate is valid for 127.001, which is the local, I, local loopback IP address and not for 192.168.5.5, which is the real IP address. So that seems to be our issue. However, I have a feeling if we fix that in our certificate, we'd have other issues because it of self-signed certificates. But this log points right to why we're not getting a connection. So moving forward, Cockpit uses a self-signed certificate. We know that. And it uses HTTPS because it's using a certificate. And most browsers and many servers are going to have problems with self-signed certificates. So there's a number of things we can do here. We can uh, force cockpit to use HTTP, and if we wanted, optionally, a different port. We could also force Cloudflare to not reject the certificate. We can do that, and we could reissue a self-signed certificate for the stated IP address. However, the probably best solution would be to get an actual trusted certificate from a certificate authority. Got to say, though, I don't really trust the cert certificate authorities that much. Anyway, the third and fourth options can be a bit complicated and they deserve their own article or their own post. I'm not going to be covering them here. They're sort of out of scope. So with the time I have, these are the options we're going to look at, number one and number two. The first option is the easiest and quickest to implement because it's all local. However, when I try this, my results were not consistent. Uh, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't, and sometimes I got rather strange results, but I can't recommend this method at the moment. I mean, yes, it's possible, but I need to do more testing to figure out why it's so inconsistent. The sec second option gave me the quick best fix. It's uh, forcing Cloudflare to not reject your certificate, and that's actually easier than I thought it was going to be. So let's cover option one first, even though I'm not recommending it. There's a file, etsy, cockpit, cockpit.config. If you haven't ever messed with this before, then the file probably doesn't exist. You'll need to create it. 
you'll need to be root to do that. So sudo or su or just log in as root. I usually do a touch to the file first and then open it in a text editor, but you can technically open it in a text editor and just save it and it'll create the file. We need to add web service if it's not there and we need to add allow unencrypt equal true. And then we need to save the file. Then we can restart the services using system control or we can reboot. Rebooting is probably simpler. And thereafter, cockpit should not forward HTTP traffic to HTTPS, which is what it does by default. Now, I would be remiss in saying that there is a security risk here in that you're sending unencrypted traffic. Well, the security risk depends on your setup. In my case, cockpit server is wired on a LAN, no direct access from outside, well, except for the Cloudflare tunnel, and no one locally to hack it, so risks are minimal for me. Your setup might differ. For example, you're in a college dorm, your roommate might hack through your Wi-Fi. I don't have that problem here, but my risks are minimal, so this is an, it's, it's acceptable for my situation. For yours, it might be another story. Now, if you want to do a port change, for example, if you want to use the common ports 443 or 80, so you just need to type the address without a port, then you can do that too. You can create, edit, modify the etsy systemd system cockpit.socket.d dot slash listen dot config file. If you've never played with this before, then the cockpit.socket.d directory probably doesn't exist and the listen.config probably doesn't exist. Again, you'll need to be root to create these. And technically, since it's a .d directory, you could call it anything.config. I tried override.config, and that worked as well as listen.config. But anyways, you want to add socket if it's not already there in a square brackets. Then you want to do a listen stream equals nothing. This will clear the 9090 port. Then you can do a listen stream 80 or 443, depending on what you're using. And then, of course, you got to restart the services or reboot your computer to get it to take effect. Let's go to option two, the one I'm recommending, Cloudflare not to reject certificates. This is easiest and fastest. But the process depends on your Cloudflare setup. If you have a remote setup where your configuration is stored on Cloudflare, then that's what I'm going to be covering here. If you're doing it locally from the computer handling Cloudflare, uh, I may cover this in a different video, but that involves creating ingress rules in the configuration file. Again, I'll probably be covering that in another video at some point in the future. Need to note the change to Cloudflare tunnels, remote or local, can take several minutes to occur. I've seen a lot of tutorials where they show the stuff happening instantaneously, and maybe 80% of the time that's true. Sometimes, though, it takes a little while. So if it's not working, grab a cup of coffee, watch a sitcom, whatever, come back in 10, 15 minutes and see if it's working then. Because, yeah, it does, in it, on some occasions, take time to propagate. OK, real quick here now. If we log into Cloudflare, you want to you're going to want to go to Zero Trust, Access, and then Tunnels. My tunnel is currently down because I'm doing some work, but I can show you what you need to do. So if you go to Configure, then up at the top, click on Public Host Name. And in this case, it's Athena is the one we're working with. You edit this one, and you can see your data here. And you see below additional application settings. You want HTTPS, you want the TLS settings. They only show up in HTTPS. So in the TLS settings, you want to scroll down and find no TLS verify, disable TLS verification certificate presented by your origin, AKA don't check it, just accept it. 
and then you save everything, wait for it to propagate, and that's it. You should be up and running at this point. So that wasn't too terribly hard. Okay, that wasn't so hard and we're pretty much there. This is probably the last video I'm gonna be doing on the uh, cockpit VM for a while. What I really need to do is get down and study KVM and Libvirt because that's the basis of both cockpit and Proxmox. And I think if I really learn those, you, you know, the command line way, the fun way, well, at that point, I'll probably be in a better position to make things do what I want, not just get by with the default settings, and just modify them to do things the way I want to. So it's going to take a while because I did a lot of studying on this one, and it was interesting, it was fun, but it was also a bit frustrating. So like I say, I want to do some reading on Libvirt and KVM and see where we can go from there. So until next time. See ya.